Now let's talk about uh, some different ways we might be able to extend or alter the melody uh, in some uh, different ways. <coughs> the uh, first idea that we might explore when talking about or thinking about melodic extension is uh, thinking about how we decide to start a particular tune and seeing if there's some way of sort of bridging or melding whatever your intro material is with the beginning of your melodic idea. Uh, we've taken a look at and a listen to Maria Schneider's Days of Wine and Roses, and I think this is a pretty great example of a song that starts with a nice pedal or vamp idea, um, then organically the melody uh, sort of naturally falls uh, um, into place with this material. You know, this is obviously uh, in contrast to other songs where there's sort of a definitive intro that then transitions into the melody. This is sort of a, um, <coughs> an idea where things sort of merge uh, relatively seamlessly. In this case, I've stolen a vamp idea that we've used in previous examples uh, um, <coughs> as some idea that you could uh, start a particular tune with and then have this vamp idea continue while the melody goes on top of it. In some cases, this will cause you to uh, use some reharm ideas um, or potentially change the harmonic rhythm of a given song so that it fits over this pedal. But it's sort of a, um, a very nice way of um, making all your material sort of synonymous with what's happening at the beginning to what's happening um, in the uh, uh, over the melody. The uh, second idea is a similar approach, but instead of using it at the beginning of a melodic phrase, using it at the end of a melodic phrase. Uh, this is another way we could sort of extend the melody out. Uh, there's a lot of songs, especially from the Great American Songbook, that end on a very long note, you know, a note that's normally uh, one bar, four beats worth, or maybe two beats worth. Uh, it's very possible to extend that out, you know, uh, to many additional bars. Maybe it's uh, uh, four bars, maybe it's eight bars, and then creating some type of vamp or pedal that happens underneath it. Um, again, I think if you think of uh, sort of Coltrane's My Favorite Things, uh, might be one example where we hear this uh, idea sort of utilized. There's, uh, there's probably numerous examples of there being a vamp or some type of tag section at the end of a tune that sort of extends out the melody. Both of these solutions are ones that are pretty easy and flexible because you can use them at the beginning or at the end of a particular melody and you don't have to alter too many notes in the middle. Uh, if you're looking for a solution for um, actually changing the uh, flow of melodic phrases, I would encourage you to consider utilizing uh, um, melody ideas that maybe happen at different rates than what they initially do. Uh, one example of the song we saw where this happened was um, with uh, Vern Sealert's arrangement of You Must Believe in Spring, where the uh, melody was actually stretched out so the... <coughs> um, the uh, melody sounded as though it was in a slower time, but the rhythm section was actually playing in a faster time. In this case, basically what happened is any note that used to be a quarter note was then actually made into a half note. In this example here that I'm writing, you'll see this is like a very uh, um, uh, sort of a similar um, analysis for how that might happen. Again, this gives you flexibility to take a song that's normally a ballad and slower and make it sound as though it's, uh, uh, you can have the rhythm section play faster while sort of maintaining the uh, original rate. If um, you were looking for something that's uh, uh, a little bit more creative or creates a lot more rhythmic tension, you of course could have a melody that happens at a rate that's not uh, just sort of equally one equals two or two equals one. You know, you could change uh, <coughs> the flow of this maybe to be dotted quarter notes. So instead of having each quarter note equal uh, a half note, each quarter note would equal a dotted quarter. Uh, in this case, you know, so I'm using, uh, trying to use good notation here so we can clearly see each beat. Um, but those should all be dotted quarters or equal to three eighth notes. Now, if you sort of think about the repercussions of this, you can create some uh, pretty interesting melodic phrases that will uh, sort of resolve in different places. They might end up with a few bars of odd times or unusual meters in the middle and come up with some uh, relatively creative ideas. Again, you wouldn't necessarily want to do this for the entire melody, um, but as a uh, means of breaking things up in the middle, it could be pretty interesting. I would encourage you to explore all three routes. <laughs>